Hello everyone, thank you for attending today's webinar, Managing Your Network for AI Workload, presented by Google. I'm Jenna D'Angelo and I'll be hosting today's webinar. I'd like to start by introducing our speakers. Today we have Muninder Singh Sambi, Vice President Product Management at Google Cloud Networking. We also have Neelay Shah, Principal Software Architect from NVIDIA. Just a few notes before we begin. To access additional resources from today's presentation, you may click the Handouts tab button on the left side of your screen. You can access closed captions from the bottom right corner of the video player. This webinar is being recorded and will be available to watch on demand within 24 hours. We'd love to hear from you. During the presentation, please submit any questions you have using the Q&A tab on the left side of your screen. Time permitting, we'll conclude with a Q&A session. Okay, Muninder, please begin. Thank you, Jenna. Um, I'm Murinder Sambi, Vice President here at Google Cloud Networking. Super excited about this particular topic, especially how Gen AI is almost fundamentally transitioning and, and uh, evolving uh, the industry. <clears throat> yeah, so first of all, like Gen AIs are not like traditional applications that you've seen, the traditional web applications. They have very different traffic patterns that result in very different requirements. And yet, most of today's networking and security technologies are built for web apps. Let me share a few differences between these applications. The traditional web applications use small requests and responses with smaller packet size. The requests are processed as soon as they arrive and processed in milliseconds. We can also cache static content with content uh, delivery networks, resulting in faster response time. With Gen AI applications, <clears throat> we see uh, an extra large request responses come back due to the multi-model traffic used by LLMs. A single LLM query or a prompt can take 100% of the TPU GPU compute time, so processing times are going to be much longer. The requests frequently have to wait in a queue for uh, available compute cycles, so your processing time is highly variable and could be in seconds to minutes. Now here at Google Cloud, we are at the forefront of innovating new technologies to serve both traditional as well as Gen AI apps. And I'm going to walk you through some of the innovations that we're bringing to market. Now, first of all, we need to understand <clears throat> what kind of different AI applications are there. We categorize them into three main buckets, training, inferencing, and assistance. For training, we enable developers to build LLMs using relevant data stores. They can fine tune their models or use other models for their specialized verticals. That vertical could be healthcare, retail, financial services, etc. The requirements are large specialized compute infrastructure, which is GPU, TPUs that are connected over a low latency fabric and a high bandwidth data transfer. For inferencing, it's all about responding to user prompts with a trained model. The requirements are specialized compute to load models and a global front end, which performs load balancing to optimize performance security for serving these models. And last but not least, you might have seen in the industry, a lot of the AI infrastructure is being leveraged for operational assistance. AI can help each one of our customers, yourself as an enterprise, efficiently manage application lifecycle, troubleshoot operation tasks such as configuration, or you're trying to optimize your infrastructure. You can now design, optimize, and operate your cloud infrastructure with an AI-enabled assistance. <clears throat> Obviously, in all these three type of different use cases, network is a fabric. Networking has to work. It's a significant enabler to help you pave the way and we're gonna talk more into what networking requirements are needed that can help you manage your network from an AI workload. So this is about five key recommendations that we would recommend. The first one being building a scalable network fabric that is built and optimized for AI ML. This is a high capacity non-blocking data center network that is optimized for training is essential to ensure optimal job completion times during model training. The second one, how do you train AI across clouds, especially with cross cloud network? Now training requests requires data ingestion, requires your data be inside anywhere. It might be on premise or in any other cloud. So how do you move this data so that you can actually use the GPU 
TPU infrastructure to be able to train on your data. Cross-cloud network provides a low latency, high reliable, uh, hybrid and multi-cloud connectivity, which is fully managed, backed by SLA, that can help you move data in a much secure and fast manner. Now, as we move data, <clears throat> we also want to think about security. Having a robust security end-to-end -end at every layer of the network is going to be extremely important. How do, how do you protect your workload, the data, and the user? It's almost non-negotiable. Implementing a comprehensive and pervasive security measure at every layer of the infrastructure is imperative to mitigate risks. Now, <clears throat> we want to talk about security, but also want to have that application experience. So how do we optimize and streamline the process for model creators to advertise their work and for consumers to discover and access those models in a simple and easy manner? We need to be able to provide a low latency, high reliable global access that enhances the usability and reach of AI models. And we can do that with some of the innovations that I'm going to talk about on the load balancing side. We also want to be able to operationalize all of this with AI powered Gemini Cloud Assist. This is leveraging our AI powered engine for operational efficiency. Now, in the next few slides, I'm actually going to click a few more details into each one of these innovations. <clears throat> Let me start with what does a scalable network for Gen AI look like? Now, the AI ML data pipeline broadly consists of a four stage methodology. There's the data ingestion, the data preparation, the model training, and inferencing. And at each stage, the underlying network infrastructure plays an important role in ensuring performance, latency, and cost efficiency. Now, let me start with data ingestion. Customers need a reliable, secure, and non blocking data ingestion from any cloud or on-premise location. And Google cross-cloud network offers exactly that. It's a high-speed SLA-backed cross-cloud connectivity that enables the transfer of massive data sets in a much simpler and faster and economical manner. On data preparation, <clears throat> customers need a high bandwidth network that will leverage capacity for data transfer and tokenization during the data validation and pre-processing phase. Google's Cloud's high-performance network that we have, the planet-scale network that we have, helps customers meet that demand of data-intensive pre-processing tasks, ensuring efficient and timely completion. On the latency side, on the, on the training side, customers need a non-blocking, high-bandwidth cluster network for the AI hypercomputer. We, obviously, on our Google data centers, run on top of optical circuit switches, direct mesh-based network topologies, the titanium offload architecture that we talked about that helps us deliver the highest performance, lower latency, reliable network that is needed for model training. On the inferencing side, <clears throat> customers need a reliable, efficient, and highly available inference infrastructure. And within Google Cloud, especially in networking, we have actually built capabilities like the internal and global load balancer with health checks, with weighted traffic splitting, and some of the new upcoming load balancing innovations for streaming that will help enhance the reliability and performance of Gen AI applications. And I'm going to talk about more of the innovations in our future session. By optimizing the network infrastructure at each stage of the AI ML data pipeline, enterprises can now achieve significant improvement in overall model development and deployment efficiency, leading to faster time to market and better user experience. Now, we all know that we have to train and the data resides either on-prem or in any other cloud. How do you move that data with, <clears throat> without having to compromise on security or without having to compromise on high latency, lower bandwidth networks? And that's exactly what Google Cross Cloud Network provides. It provides a secure and efficient data ingestion from any location, whether it's on-prem or any other cloud. With Google's planet scale network, we offer 70 plus regions in 200 countries and territories that are connected over 2 million miles of terrestrial and subsea fiber cable. We also have innovations such as cross cloud interconnect, which are very unique. 
where we actually manage and provision a direct fiber connection to any of the other cloud providers that is fully backed with a 99.99% SLA. It just takes a few clicks to help it set up, which, is, which helps us reduce significant amount of total cost of ownership, roughly about anywhere between 40 to 50%, and providing you all the requirements that you need in order to move data from one cloud or on-prem into Google Cloud. Now, security is paramount <clears throat> to Gen AI, and every aspect of Gen AI needs to be protected. Enterprises need high security efficacy, simplicity, and strong network controls to protect their workload, data, and user. To protect AI and all workloads, we offer the best in cloud, next generation cloud and GFW that provides 20 times better threat efficacy than other alternatives that are available. Our web-based application firewall, the Cloud Armor, has mitigated the largest DDoS attack on the planet. These products are built to provide security at scale while keeping in mind the threat landscape that is changing with Gen AI applications. Now, securing the data as you move it is going to be super important. And we also have both data at rest as well as data in transit for, for compliance as well as other needs using Cloud DLP or third party solutions that are available. <clears throat> Moving to Gen AI inferencing. Gen AI inferencing workloads present unique challenges to traffic management due to their multi-model nature and varying request and response times. A single large LLM inference query can consume 100% of the GPU and TPU compute time with inference latencies ranging from seconds to minutes. Hence the traditional model of round robin or utilization based traffic management that we have are not optimal for Gen AI based inferencing workloads. Instead, users want to distribute traffic based on the queue depth of the pending prompts that are there. For solving exactly this, we actually introduced the queue depth to be set as a custom metric in our application load balancer that will help us distribute traffic to keep the queue depth as shallow as possible. That helps you lower average as well as peak latency while also providing better GPU efficiencies and lowering cost. In addition to this, we also introduced something where we can also intercept and integrate third-party ecosystem providers with a very unique innovation of service extensions. This is a data plane integration that we can provide. We can now add security. You can add other, um, I would say, application-based um, ecosystem providers, uh, which can actually provide value, do custom uh, header manipulation, can do uh, redirection of traffic in a much more smarter manner, apply security policies, the out of the possibility is there. And you see that in the model service endpoint on this particular slide. We also have the Gemini Google Cloud Assist. Here, I'm actually gonna walk through the slide. Uh, we do have a demo. So you can think it's about Friday and I'm getting ready to end the day, but then I'm, you know, you get a ping where one of the developers is talking about a latency problem. So you can now go to the Google Gemini Cloud Assist and say, okay, um, what kind of a, can you help me troubleshoot the symbol shop service latency problem for me? Oh, I think the animation might not be working. Yes. <clears throat> um, since the demo is not working, I'll just verbalize it. Uh, Gemini Cloud Assist is our AI Gen AI tool that helps you operationalize, that helps you manage your entire infrastructure, cloud infrastructure within Google Cloud. It can go from design and, and develop when you're building your projects, when you're building your network architectures, you're building your cloud solutions. It can help you design. It can help you Optimize when you're looking, let's say, hey, how do I help reduce cost? How do I make it more secure? Google Cloud can provide those assistance. It can also help you troubleshoot and operationalize your network. So the example that I was showing here, there is some latency issues. How do you go down and identify where the latency issues are? Uh, this is a very powerful tool. We believe every cloud uh, user will be able to use this and help accelerate some of their journey into the cloud, whether they're bringing new workloads 
or even operationalize and optimize their cloud infrastructure in a much simpler way. Now with that, I would like to invite Nile. Hey, Nile. Hello. Welcome, Nile, and thanks for joining me today. Uh, as you know, there are many customers who are adopting Gen AI and GPU demand that has skyrocketed. What are some of the key challenges that you are seeing from a solution perspective as customers adopt um, this Gen AI and GPU infrastructure? Sure. Hey, thanks for uh, having me. This is an exciting time and I'm excited to be part of um, uh, the new solutions that we're putting together. Um, so in terms of challenges, um, I think there are many, <laughs> but I like to think of it um, in kind of three kind of areas. Uh, the first, and I think the one that is most exciting to be involved in this domain, but also is a significant challenge, is just how incredibly fast moving it is, right? So from a generative AI perspective, we're seeing new models, new architectures, applications, um, even serving strategies uh, constantly evolving. And so what we've heard from developers over and over again is that not only is there uh, kind of a laser focus on the production deployment metrics, like throughput and latency and total cost of ownership, things like that, once you get your solution deployed, but there's also um, a large focus on how fast we can get those uh, solutions and new things coming in down the pipe um, deployed. So real focus on developer productivity in addition to how do we optimize the resource utilization once things are deployed. Uh, one of our partners kind of coined the terms of developer throughput. And so they, we're looking to optimize not only for GPU throughput, but also for developer throughput. Um, the time it takes to get a new model or a new solution out the door, uh, how to make that as painless as possible. And again, working, partnering with Google Cloud to make some of that infrastructure pieces uh, simple and kind of push button uh, really helps with that uh, to drive um, the velocity that's needed in this space. Um, the second thing, you know, as we move beyond uh, just, you know, how fast things are moving, I think what we're starting to see is some of the traditional metrics, and I think you pointed to this earlier as well, the traditional metrics and traditional infrastructure ways that we've been doing load balancing um, don't necessarily directly apply in the same ways to generative AI applications. So as you mentioned, I mean, fundamentally generative AI is different. Um, the computation and memory requirements for each request is not uniform. I think that comes down to the fundamental problem, right? You, when you have a specific prompt that's uh, 1,000 tokens in length versus 100 tokens in length, um, the computation and memory requirements for that request uh, are going to be different than the previous request. So it's harder to deal with things at the request level. Uh, so the exciting thing that you know we're working together with your team um, is to write to start to um, surface more generative AI specific metrics, um, things that are like first token latencies, inner token latencies, KV cache utilization um, to give greater visibility. Uh, so again, working on the project I am with Triton Inference Server, working to make those visible and then make those usable for load balancing solutions um, that Google Cloud is making there. Um, so again, fundamentally, uh, the current technologies, the current metrics are probably not sufficient. We've seen that we need to do more. Um, but the, again, the exciting thing is that we're working to, to solve that problem with you guys. Um, just as a thought experiment, again, I like to think of it as that all requests are not equal. So if you look at the requirements and the time uh, that it would take to do, like, let's say, a summary application from taking a 250 word summary of like a thousand page legal document that looks very different in terms of time and compute and memory uh, than trying to get tips for travel planning uh, in Barcelona. So you have to design systems that can scale effectively for both types of requests. Um, the third thing I think, and this is probably just goes back to the notion of large language model, <laughs> is that these models are huge uh, and they really require significant resources, um, cluster level design. Right. And when we talk about cluster level design, there's so much that goes into that, um, as you mentioned. So from a networking perspective, it's not only just thinking of it from a service level, which I usually said is kind of like how do I load balance HTTP requests or GRPC, but you've also got to be thinking at the, the much lower level at the kind of high performance computing aspects layers like MPI and nickel about how you're doing model parallelism. Right. So it's not um, 
a one piece of the stack that needs to be optimized for these, given the huge size that they are. Um, you really have to think about it from uh, a cluster level. And I think as part of that, what we're starting to see is that we're taking solutions and things that were designed, I think, realistically for hundreds to 200 application applied machine learning kind of experts in systems that are designed for their workflows and now trying to scale that to generalized thousands of developers that are perhaps not as in tune to each part of that pipeline, right? They would rather just take an off the, uh, off the shelf solution and deploy it into their larger solution, which also has its own complicated business logics. So it's not longer just about uh, some of the data movement. It's also how you integrate with databases and other pieces of the solution. Um, so broadly speaking, I think I see those kinds of three sets of challenges. No, that's that's really helpful. <clears throat> um, and in, in each of these challenges, uh, what's your view, like how important is the network and how important is it to think about networking capabilities as you design or think of your applications that are going to be gen AI based? Yeah, I mean, I think the networking is, I think, critical. Um, it's often, I think, from a developer point of view, I wouldn't say an afterthought, but likely, you know, like from our perspective, from a, like, let's say a Triton solution developer, I really want our developers not to think about Triton at all. <laughs> so in a large case, you know, I think I'd also want our developers not to think about the network, uh, but it's entirely critical, right? So having um, high bandwidth connectivity uh, between um, two nodes that are doing, um, let's say uh, a large language model, like a, a Gemma model, which is gonna be, um, you know, billions of parameters and require at least uh, two or three uh, H100s, uh, you're going to need uh, to make sure both of the workloads are co-located, but also once they are co-located that you really have that the best possible networking between those. Um, so you don't have any kind of bubbles and latency. Um, you don't want to, that to be the problem. You want to be really focused on your solution that you're providing and the accuracy of that and not worrying about the interconnects between the things. So it's, it's a critical piece um, that likely we don't want developers to think about, um, but it's a, it's an obvious thing that needs to be optimized. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> I think the, the movement of data, everything, anytime you move data, uh, security becomes highly, highly important. And especially because of compliance, it could be because of compliance or just you know, the data leaves. I mean, these are company IPs, intellectual properties that they have built over years, right? Uh, we yeah. want to make sure as that movement of data happens, it happens in a very secure manner, um, cannot be infiltrated, um, no data exfiltration possible, ensuring it still remains intact, there's no malware impact as it moves. So security becomes really, really important. <clears throat> now, obviously, like from a training perspective, having that high performance connectivity between the, between the nodes and providing that data movement in a simple and easy manner. But as we go to inferencing, and, and you've seen the innovations that we brought out, where customers can now use a customer custom metric on our application load balancer with queue depth, and be able to monitor that so that they can actually provide and distribute traffic management using our application load balancer in a much better manner, which is optimized for a Gen AI application, right? Thereby lowering their peak as well as average latency. How do you see that part working out? Um, I think there's two aspects of that. I think one, it's 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 great and kind of fundamental that we're moving into the queue based kind of a, what we also think of as a kind of a pool based approach um, versus kind of a round robin kind of push based approach, right? So to your point, it's not going to be as much about just distributing it fairly across nodes, uh, but it's also looking at how busy those nodes are and how backed up they already are, right? And I think the queue depth um, is exciting from providing that additional capabilities at the request level. Um, and I think going forward, uh, what some of the exciting things that we're working on is to surface even more in-depth metrics um, around um, token latency and token size. So you can even fine tune that queue depth uh, further or augment that um, so that it's not just request level, but maybe it's now a token depth, right? You know, maybe we're talking about that level. And again, some of these things we're still evolving about what it is that how the scheduling algorithms would change. I think our first primary focus right now, I think, again, we're 
at the point of let's standardize the visibility. Let's get these metrics surfaced in a way that people can start to play with them and see if they make a difference, right? Uh, we believe strongly that they can um, from a load balancing scheduling strategy. The other part I think is that giving these metrics also gives you much more insight into your traffic patterns. As we talked about um, your input and output token length requirements for any LLM application, um, are gonna be critical in designing the resources you need. So giving more visibility into these metrics offers both uh, better ways to do automatic scaling and load balancing, but also gives you insights into your applications uh, so you can design your solutions better, right? We would, I, again, go back to the thing, I'd really like developers not to have to worry about that and it has to be able to automate exactly all the resource utilization that they need, uh, but we're not there today, right? So if you've got a very demanding application, chances are you're really gonna have to sit down um, and design that solution carefully, uh, but we wanna give you at least more tools and more insight into your traffic to be able to design those uh, solutions correctly as we also work yeah. to automate that process. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right. I think this is the start of a journey. I think customer metrics with QDEF is just the starting point. There's obviously more opportunities for us to partner with NVIDIA as we de define them. Uh, I mean, the goal, obviously, as, as you had mentioned, like it's about high performance, low latency, and making sure your GPU infrastructure is being optimally used and more, most efficiently used, right? And that's exactly the value that networking can provide. So with exactly. like the examples on tokens, how do we manipulate tokens? How do we move them around? Um, if there are capabilities that we can do, um, I think the teams are obviously engaged. We'll continue to bring some of these new innovations uh, to market as well. Um, <clears throat> now I know there's NVIDIA as a leader when it comes to AI, ML and GPU, TPU infrastructure. Uh, it'd be good to hear for our enterprises to actually hear what's new uh, coming from NVIDIA, um, and as they think about the new innovations coming from NVIDIA, from an infrastructure perspective, what are the things that they should be um, thinking about as they design their workloads, as they design their applications? Yeah, and I think, you know, as you mentioned, I think the start of a journey that, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, we really are just getting started, right? So I'm quite excited about some of the new things that are coming in. Uh, apart, you know, we've already talked a lot about the inference server um, and the metrics that we can provide there. Um, so I think that's going to be really exciting for people to design solutions. But as we talked, you know, the collaboration really is a full stack collaboration. When we when we talk about that, it goes all the way down from inference server as well as um, optimizing models together, like the Gemma family models, which is an exciting you know, kind of joint project to optimize those for the latest hardware, um, all the way down the stack. And so in terms of um, networking, uh, we're quite excited about some of the new interconnects, the ConnectX adapters that we're going to really optimize that GPU to GPU communication that's coming. Um, and because of the close partnership, what I'm excited about as well is just making the latest technologies available to so many customers so quickly, right? So being uh, one of the first cloud providers to provide Blackwell, which is coming uh, soon in 2025, is going to be amazing, you know, for the industry as well as for uh, our joint partners, right? To be able to see them, that goes back to just getting fundamentally the amount of compute possible, uh, you know, bringing the tensor cores up there, but it also brings in new networking uh, technologies between those single uh, GPUs on the single node, but also between them, again, with the Connect stacks. So looking forward to that uh, kind of improvements in the bandwidth between these nodes, these multi-node, multi-data center almost applications. Um, and I think you'd mentioned earlier as well about confidential computing. That's also another exciting place uh, with the Hopper architecture and Blackwell as well. Having the first set of kind of end-to-end -end hardware based root of trust uh, so that your data really is um, basically secure all the way from the CPU from the boot times as well as the GPU firmware and um, uh, kind of secure enclaves that work on the GPU as well. So no longer will there be any place where the data can be exposed or the model weights can be exposed all the way from, um, again, the, the application layer all the way down to the GPU as well. And making it a hardware-based unit of just uh, is really exciting, right? And I think it's the first time that that's uh, going out there, at least with the hoppers and going to be expanded with Blackwell. Awesome. So thank you, Nilay. These are some great, really great innovations and we continue to look forward on the partnership uh, working with you as well as NVIDIA as we evolve the Gen AI networking 
capabilities and new innovations that we can bring together that can help our joint enterprise customers. <clears throat> With that, um, I would move to the resources slide. So there's obviously more details for customers who would like to read. Uh, there's a blog that we do have some analyst white papers. Uh, we do have a TCO study that was done by ESG. And we also have a solution brief on cross-cloud network. Uh, depending on the topic, feel free to reach out to the team. If there are more questions, uh, we're happy to engage with you as a customer and talk about joint development or co-development on new technologies and new applications and accelerating your journey into the cloud, especially in the Gen AI world. I'll pass it back to Jenna. Yes, thank you so much. And so this is a final reminder, this webinar has been recorded. You can access the recording within 24 hours by using the same link as today. I wanna to thank you for joining this Fierce, Tech, uh, Fierce Biotech webinar and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.